Hello, this is Randall Root, and in this video we are going to look at working with connection strings and some common issues that come up. So, there are plenty of times where you have a project that you want to connect to a database. And uh, there are a couple ways you can do it. You can actually go through and put the connection string as a hard-coded string right in your code. So here I have a static method called get connection object and to make the connection I go ahead and put my code here to connect to my local server and to open up the database called conference room scheduler it's for uh, a project I give out sometimes well the issue here is that if ever I need to change the connection like change the server name I need to go locate that um, connection string in my code. And if I forget where it's at, I could be hunting around for a bit. A more recommended way of doing this is not to store the connection string in the actual code itself. So this is a, a little processing class I made. Instead, you open up a <clears throat> configuration, application configuration file, and you put the code in here as a connection string. Now, once that's done, you don't need the hard-coded version anymore. Instead, oops, you use this more dynamic version that uses the um, <coughs> connection string property, connection string property of the connection strings class under connection uh, configuration manager configuration system now this is kind of odd because uh, it turns out there is a system configuration that natively comes with your project but it doesn't contain configuration manager so if you're using the dot notation you start typing it out you'll find configuration manager is not there so what you have to actually do is you have to oddly enough go and add it in again right click and you say add a reference system dot configuration come on pop up <laughs> something okay the reference is gone so Configuration setting shows up, but no, nothing about configuration manager, and that's the issue. Okay, now I'll go back and add it. No wonder I'm in the wrong spot. System dot configuration, and now when I come back to the dot notation, I can see. Configuration Manager does show up. Or at least doesn't give me an error anyways. Anyway, I don't know why IntelliSense is uh, not behaving like I want right now, but you can see Configuration Manager is indeed showing up. But that's because I went ahead and manually added in the configuration. So. Now, at that point, you need to refer to the configuration setting by name. So whatever the name is here, that's what you put here. That will get your configuration, and then you can go ahead and use it. So that's how you would do it. Um, if you're working in a assembly, a DLL assembly, like I am here, so I've got this uh, DLL project, I'm going to use it in a web application. There's one more step, and this is very important. This is a missing, a missing step for most people. When you go through and you make a reference to your DLL project, you would think the application configuration file would come along with it. But if I go and open up the folder, and I look in the bin folder, I'll see that the DLL is there, but the application configuration file is not. Oh, it's true, the web configuration file is here, but um, that's not going to help me much on that. What I need to do is I need to go to the web config file 
and add that configuration string in yet again. If I don't, the error message I get is not really uh, instructive. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, that's not going to help me. Okay, so that's working. I'll take this out. Save my work. Sure. Try again. And now I get an error message. It says this is coming from the DLL, but um, the problem is, is that it just can't find that object. Object reference not set to an instance of an object, which makes you start thinking that, oh, maybe I have to make a, a brand new object from this. But no, this is static. That's not the issue. The issue is it couldn't find the connection setting by name. So I couldn't fill this and then couldn't use that later. Not the most obvious error message. And again, this is actually something in the web config file. You would think the issue would be that it's missing from the app file or something's misspelled. Uh, that not, that's not the case when I'm, I'm working with this web application. So um, that's it. If it's in the web config file, it runs just fine. There you go. So hopefully you'll find this useful. Um, I'm sure people will have problems with that. So I'm going to go ahead and post this up on my YouTube site. And hopefully I'll save a, a bunch of people some major headaches. Until later, I'll see you soon. Bye.